All right, welcome to Delivered with Dylan and Dale. Today, the focus of our conversation is on profit. Is it a bad word? What's the utility of it? How is how do we perceive profit in our you know today in our businesses as entrepreneurs? The reason we're talking about this today is because I believe that our relationship with the idea of profit influences our pricing and it drives a lot of the decisions we make as entrepreneurs, as professional firms. So it's really important that we ask ourselves, where do these things come from? Where does this idea of profit come from? How, how, how do we see profit uh, in its relationship to our companies and, and you know to our clients and our society? Um, and profit is kind of a touchy subject. I think this is because there's a couple of like really obvious big examples of companies that extract too much profit and do the wrong thing. Obviously one pharmaceutical companies, for example, um, where, you know, they jack up the price of drugs and, and, and people have a really negative perception as to, you know, the, the role of profit in those organizations. Uh, the other one like banks and finance and after the 2008 collapse and compensation packages, and people just had a really sour taste in their mouth about extreme profitability at that level. Um, but we believe that profit, you know, in this case for our listeners and ourselves as professional firm owners, it, you know, we need to have, uh, we need to refine our view of profit. And so I think, um, you know, we want to start with why, why is, why is profit a good thing? Like what, what, what is the good in profit? And Dale, I'm going to, I'm going to kick that over to you. Well, if you, if you're looking at it, so this comes up a lot when I get asked a question in my areas of competence, especially in marketing, there's always textbook and then there's right real life, right? So textbook, you're going to learn that your company has to make a profit, right? You're going to learn that. And there's a reason for it. Um, the simple reason is companies can't right. operate without it. Um, unless you're a nonprofit, I guess, and you spend down to the last penny and you know, you do what you do with it. Uh, a for-profit company has to make some kind of profit to, to stay in business. Um, textbook profits, not about overcharging somebody because you think they might have extra money or, you know, I was thinking of this example after we spoke the other day, like how about a hurricane hurricane comes through and you've got the only chainsaw and bulldozer in town and you 10 X your prices because you know, people are desperate right. and dire for it. Um, we're not talking about that. We're talking about strategies and budgets that help you maintain a healthy company. Right. Right. Why is it, why is, why do we need to create, maintain and improve our company is to stay in business and we need money to do that. So that little bit left over, we can take for ourselves to reward ourselves for the sacrifices we've made as owners. We can put it back into the business. Um, textbook, you shouldn't be overcharging because you're wasteful or because uh, you don't, you haven't put in the effort to respond to the market. And I know you're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, you need lines of credit, right? If you ever want to go for financing, if you ever want to go to build credit for your business, get that, uh, maybe not so much your first credit card, but you want to buy a vehicle or you want to buy some type of capital asset, a, a tool, or uh, sometimes even leasing an office, you have to have uh, a decent financial, you have to have decent financials for your company. And that would include some sort of profit. Um, We'll get into, you know, what you do with that profit is that there is definitely an intersection of morality and company um, viability, right? We're not going to answer that today, right? So we can argue, you know, Facebook made $2 billion in profit. Is that too much? We're not going to argue about that today. We're going to say that you need some amount, and there is a, definitely a social and a moral piece to this that you should really consider um, – when making that th those financial right plans. yes i think it's important to remember that profit exists within a moral framework and the way a company makes profit matters right like if a if a company makes profit by extorting their customers or jacking up their prices or manipulating the marketplace then that's a bad way to make a profit if a company makes a, a, a large profit from taking big risks which is where profit comes from it comes from risk uh and adding value to society, uh, then, then that's a, a reasonable profit. And, um, 
uh, you know, uh, some schools would say that, you know, there is there can no there's no such thing as an unfair price, because uh, if someone is willing to exchange, you know, capital for your service, then they must deem it fair because they're they're an independent, rational agent and they're able to exchange goods with you. If they do that, then it's a fair price. And so um, so I guess the question is, um, OK, so we decided profit is a good thing. You know, we want to make a profit. We, we think profit is a healthy thing. Uh, why is it so hard to make? And what are some strategies for improving your profitability? Um, I can speak to one specific one that I've been exposed to over the past 12 to 18 months. And that's the idea of profit first. And that's a concept put together by this guy named Mike Michalowicz, um, who talks about entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial poverty and how under traditional, generally accepted accounting principles, entrepreneurs are set up for failure and are set up to not extract profit from the business um, the way they deserve. And that's because typically we look at profit as being uh, sales minus expenses equals profit. And so the profit first model says, let's flip that on its head. Let's do sales minus profit equals expenses. And, and the order here matters because um, now you're prioritizing, you're baking in profit into everything you do. And your expenses are the thing um, that you need to be wary of. So um, a lot of companies, and I can speak to 118 Group having been in this, this mindset before, do something called bank balance accounting, where essentially you open up your account, you know, you look up, oh, I've got, you know, 50K in the bank, um, life is good, no stress. It's hard to parse out what that even means, right? You're like, you, 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 you know, you have plenty of resources at your disposal. It makes you less, it, it, it kind of takes your edge off a little bit. Um, the profit first model, when you, when you take your sales and you, you automatically take out an X percentage of profit, um, you know, call it 10%, you take it out right every week, you take out 10%, you look at your operating account or your income account, you take 10% out, you put it into a profit first account. Now you're left with your, now you're left with the money left over to run the business, right? Like you've, you've, you've forced yourself to take out a profit and now you have less money to work with. And, um, Mike, ref, you know, uses a very, a very apt analogy. It's the, it's the toothpaste analogy. And we've all been in the position of having a fresh tub of toothpaste and applying it very liberally, you know, like it falls off the toothbrush, it ends up in the sink, you wash it down the drain, you're fine. And then when you get to that last bit of toothpaste, you're, you're rolling up the whole, you know, the whole thing, you're squeezing the last little bit of the top and you're just like accurately kind of painting your toothbrush with it. And he says, that's, the model we need to have when it comes to our expenses, we, you know, and it, we, it's hard to have that when everything's exists in one account, when you have this nice, healthy, you know, bank balance that isn't differentiated, uh, it's hard for you to, to behave that way. It's just human psychology. It's the, it's the shortcomings of being human beings operating these companies. So he talks about um, profit first. He talks about take, setting up a few different accounts, right? Like if in your business, if at your bank, if you're banking online or you're using a, a local bank or a credit union, Go there, open up a couple different accounts, open up a profit account, open up a taxes account, open up a vault account and get in the habit of regularly because profit is a habit. It's not an event. Uh, get in the process of regularly moving money over to some of those different accounts um, and, and then figuring out what's left over to run the business, right? What, what can I work with from an expense perspective? And that will make you much more efficient. It'll make you much leaner, much meaner. Um, which overall is much healthier. And then you have that profitability to do some really important things, right? Like, you know, reinvest in your team, offer new benefits, take some time away from the company to strategize, uh, to, to consider the needs of your clients. I mean, you can't do that if you don't have profit, if you don't have a gap between what it costs you to produce something and the, the, the value to the customer, then you're constantly just in a position of, uh, staying alive and that's survival mentality. And so, um, does that make sense, Dale? Makes absolute sense. And if I could chime in here, uh, Gen X paranoid, don't mm. trust anybody mindset. <laughs> uh, and some of you might be thinking the same thing too. Like, well, if I take away the profit first, you know, what happens if I don't have the money I need to run that project? What if, what if it's a losing project? Like, what am I going to do? Right. And that's a good question. So if you do find yourself in that situation and we talked about this, um, 
couple of easy things, you know, raise your prices mm -hmm. by 10% or X percent right away. Can, can you charge more? Are you charging enough? Maybe you need to conduct a, a, a discovery process on your pricing. Look around at what's happening in your market. Are you even a viable business? Right. right? Do some market research. Is your inability to create a profit in this new method, the market responding to your business and the value you're adding? That's right. a cold, hard question to ask, right? Um, consider adding more value for little cost. Look at your service and say, what can I make this better for the client? Better than my competition, better, better, better. But maybe it's not going to cost me a ton right. of extra money, right? Um, maybe you've got a killer product and you give a one-year warranty, but no one ever uses it. Can you offer a three-year mm. warranty, right? Look at ways that you can maximize the value of what you're delivering without incurring a ton more cost and then maybe even increasing your prices upon it. Right. So that's the second thing. Um, reducing your expenses. I mean, that's a no brainer. I go through my expenses every week, Tuesday morning. First thing I do when I wake up, I look at every single transaction. I know people that look at it every single morning. I just happen to go through it once a week, cancel things we don't need. I look at, you know, just, overall big picture, um, trying to keep that lean. That's something we should right. be doing anyways. Um, training, right? For you and your staff, can you, are there better or faster ways to do things, right? Um, maybe you're already doing that, but maybe it's your communication. Maybe it's your, your sales pipeline. Does it take a long time to close a sale? Or are you, are you going back at the end and doing too many things that prevent you from moving on? Like, Look at your overall skill set of you and your team and your communication and say, is there something that we could button this up a little bit to get us to that point um, where we could right. be more profitable? And I really like what you said, um, you know, the idea that profit is a signal, right? So if, if and, and that was your idea, well, I like it. it. <laughs> I guess that makes sense. <laughs> uh, a quote here that I really like is that a profit is the difference between what inputs cost the company and what they are worth to somebody else. And so if you're, if you're listening to this and you're like, well, I can't possibly take money out off the top and still have money to uh, provide my service and run my business, then that's a signal from the marketplace that what you're doing either um, is not valuable enough to people um, or it costs you much too much to produce. It means you need to find a way to either you have two levers you can pull here. You can either increase the value of what you're offering in order to um, in order to make that difference greater, ergo profit, or decrease the cost of what you're doing. Um, and, you know, and make yourself more efficient. Which is why profit is it drives businesses in 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 free open marketplaces to lower their price and sell higher volume. That's why profit is a good thing because um, you know it, it, it forces it forces companies to ask themselves, you know, it's a signal from consumers. It, are we doing the right thing? Are we making the right decisions? Are we allocating our resources in the right place? Um, if, if you're not, then you're not going to make a profit. And that's a sign you should use that. That's a signal from, from the universe. Hey, you're either, you're either not doing this efficiently enough and it's costing you much to deliver this, or you're not providing enough value with the things that you are doing and you need to choose, you need to pick a lever and, and try and make some progress there. Um, and so I think also profit is a, it's a, it's a validity test, right? Like if unless you know, for me, it's like, it's, it's proving that what we're doing is valuable to people. And so um, we need that validity test It's a confidence booster, you know, for, for entrepreneurs, D D Dale, like I can okay. imagine you can relate to when you, when you, re when you can, you know, crunch the numbers and realize like you're making a profit, you know, it, it's like, all right, I sleep easier. I'm, I'm, I'm more pleasant with my team. I'm, I'm more dedicated to my client base. Like if you're grinding in this game and not even making a profit and, and just to stay afloat, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna fizzle or you're gonna get burnt out. You become, resentful, you become resentful, jaded. Oh. You become resentful of your employees yep. who are getting paid every week, of your clients who are getting value, and of yourself because right. you're not performing. Right. So, a hundred percent, I think it, it creates a negative atmosphere if you're just if you're just breaking even. And so, but you know, as we talked about, in order to in order to do this well, you need to uh, you need to adopt these two ideas that profit is not bad, 
and that profit is a tool. And so your prices should reflect profitability. You know, you shouldn't feel bad about making a profit. You need a profit. Your people need a profit. Uh, and two, profit should come first. You know, like you, it, it's, it's, you should, if you cannot take profit out of your business and still operate, then you need to make some changes. So, um, and, and you will never know that unless you try pulling the profit out and realize, oh, actually we're, you know, we're struggling, we're going to struggle to meet payroll this week. Or, you know, we're now that we take taken profit out, like we, our tools realize our tools are too expensive. You need that action to uncover that. You need to shine light on that and taking the profit out helps you do that. So it's kind of a, a tool in that way. Um, so, and like you said, Dale, you know, you, what the tactics for, you know, making more of a profit, um, you know, how do you, you talked a little bit about how you can like learn to add more value. Like, you know, what does that look like for you? Is it, is it conversations with clients? You know, like, is that a way, like a listening tour? Like, Hey, you know, that's something we kind of did recently where I was like, Hey, look, we're trying to add more value to our clients. What does that look like? How can we do that? Where can we fit in? You know, is that a tactic that you've, you have experience with? So I would say that's a great question. I'd say, uh, there's two things that need to happen. You need to ask the market what it wants, but you also need to be a leader mm. and tell it what it needs. Interesting. Right. So depending on the space you're in, uh, let's say you're a landscaper and before, you know, organic chemicals were a thing, there were people coming out saying, Hey, the stuff we're using, right. we got to stop. You need to be using this other stuff and they're telling people, Hey, I know this is more money. But you need to be using this. I think there's a certain level of that that needs to happen in all service-based businesses. And that also makes you a differentiator. Mm, right. Right. So that yeah, that, I think that's interesting. So, um, you know, being, being customer focused and listening to what customers need and what they perceive as being valuable, because again, in order for them, you know, it's an exchange of goods and services between two individuals. They need to have the right, they need to see something as valuable if you're going to do this well. And so you, the only, and the customer is the arbiter of what is valuable. Like their subjective view of value is what's going to define your relationship. And so getting in their head, having conversations with them, the ones you trust, extracting some ideas. Uh, I think testing pricing increases is a really interesting thing, right? Like you find some maybe lower stakes clients who, um, who you're not necessarily, you know, who you're, you're, you're not afraid to maybe upset a little bit or, or to lose, you have to be willing to lose some clients because that's what raising prices will do you. And then you try and present them with higher prices and you start to get a sense of where are the, like, how do, where do we fall in terms of the perception of value of our services? Right. Are we, is this price that I'm, I'm pitch, pitching to these people way too much? I would, yeah, I would say we need to shift our mindset a little bit. If we're in this position where we need to charge higher prices, Let's stop using the word higher prices and let's use the word accurate mm, prices. Right? right. So get in your mind that you're not charging more, right. you're charging what you need. Right. You've been undercharging. If you're not taking a profit, you've been undercharging. And so the correction, like you're saying, I think that's a good that's a good point. The correction is charging what you should be charging to get that profit. Uh, yes. And I think no one's gonna tell you what what percentage of margin or profit is reasonable within your business. I think, I think, you know, another interesting quote that I think is a good one for this is, you know, the buyer buys for as little as possible. The seller sells for as much. So, so I your job in a marketplace, the marketplace needs you to behave like this to self-regulate your job as an agent in the marketplace is to try and sell for as much as you can. And your buyer's job is to try and buy for as little as they can. And that's what drives innovation. That's what drives company growth. That's what drives, you know, our entire economy essentially. And so don't feel bad about trying to maximize your profit and maximize the, the, the price of what you're selling because you can trust that the consumers, the people buying the products will tell you no if it's too much and will force you to adjust your, 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 your algorithm for that if it's not successful. So it will self-regulate. Um, you just need to go after it. So, um, so that, I mean, with that being said, I don't know, Dale, anything else? No, I think we, I think you nailed it. All right, head. folks. Thank you very much. Um, and we'll see you next time. Adios. See you next time.